Hi, welcome back to another One Chart Lesson. Today we're doing a fantastic song by an amazing songwriter, Colin Hay, who was the singer in Men at Work in the 80s, and this is an original Men at Work song, and this is the arrangement that I'm doing. I'm doing it in the original key of E major, that the original band did it. Colin Hay, as most of you probably know, is uh, you know, a, a formidable songwriter and a performer, and he is uh, still based in the States and still performing a lot. Whenever he does this song now, he usually plays it in the key of D, which is down a, a whole step from the original key. Uh, but he's usually playing it on an acoustic guitar by himself as well, incredibly well. Uh, so he, he, he's changed the key. He's also done a fantastic tutorial of this song, uh, but it's in the key of D. So I want to do a version of it in the key of E. By the way, before we begin, there is a fantastic guitar solo to this song which you may have heard at the start of this. Stay tuned if you want to learn how to play this guitar solo. I've, put, I've included tabs for uh, a, a, an acoustic guitar version as well as an electric guitar version. I'm going to play the acoustic guitar version and I'm going to take you through it step by step at the end of this because there's a chart, separate chart available for uh, both the electric and the acoustic versions of this fantastic guitar solo towards the end of this video, so stay tuned. And what I'll also do is include a chart to play it in the key of D as well, uh, and I've also I've also seen Colin Hay playing a version of this or an arrangement of this in drop D, or it might even be double drop D tuning, which basically means the two E strings are dropped down to D tuning. So you've got D A D G B D, and he's got a really nice arrangement of that as well. So um, by all means, uh, please have a look at the man himself showing you how to play this song because he's got a, a, an amazing way about him and a, an amazing voice and if you can't tell already I'm a big fan. So we're going to include the the big intro as well which was obviously played on, on synthesizer. Uh, we start with the C sharp minor 7. Well actually we start with a C sharp power chord on your chart You'll see this is just the 4th fret A string with the 6th fret D string and the 6th fret G string. Sounds like that. After you hit that with the first beat, you go over to a C sharp minor 7, so you change your fingering slightly to a C sharp minor 7, so you can go 5th fret on the B string, 4th fret on the B string, 4th fret on the G string, and 6th fret on the D string. So it sounds like this. Then we move down to a what I've called a B add 4 because what we're doing is a B bar chord but we're leaving this top E string open. So we go again with the, just the power chord version which is the root and the fifth and then the octave above the root again. Second fret A string, fourth fret D string, fourth fret G string. And then you go on the top string and you go open top string, 4th fret B string, 4th fret G string, 4th fret D string. So Then you repeat that. And then we're into the song. I can get to sleep. I think about the implications. What we're doing here. First of all, strumming, muffling our strums. Pick or fingernails, does not matter. You're strumming just the first two or even three notes in this chord, which is an E power chord, okay? So on your chart, I haven't put a chord diagram, but I've actually just put a tab of the notes that we're playing. So it's seventh fret A string, ninth fret D string, and ninth, if you want to add the ninth fret, of the G string as well, that is also an E. That's, just, that's your root note E, that's the octave above also being an E. So what we're doing is we're strumming just the A and the D, or even including the G string like I said, but strumming like that. Now the way to get that palm muting sound is by letting this part of your hand just sneak onto the end of the strings very very lightly, just a few millimeters. If you go too far, you, you kill the tone of the string and you kill the note and it, it doesn't sound 
good if you go too far, but just come back so it's just starting to muffle. So this is without muffling. This is just with a little bit of muffling. So you've got to find that sweet spot yourself and, and kind of anchor your the, the heel of your hand just in front of the bridge there. Then you're strumming those with eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. Then what we do is we drop the root note down while keeping the fifth, which is the note on the D string. So we drop the seventh fret A string down to the sixth fret A string and we keep the ninth fret D string. So start on the E, drop the root note down. You can change your fingering if you like. Some people do this and just stretch out so they're still using their first and third fingers. I tend to do this a bit. Move my first finger down to that sixth fret and then move my pinky to take that note on the D string. Doesn't matter which way you do it, whatever's comfortable for you. I can get to sleep. Then we do the D power chord on five on the A string, seven on the D string, and do the same thing. hear a little open string note when I change positions during these chords. That's actually fine to do, as long as it's just one eighth note. Because it happens so quickly, you don't really hear it. Also, one further thing, there's a little accent we're doing on every third eighth note. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the accent on the one, the four, and the seven. Dun, dun. accent is is just a little bit of a heavier strum compared to the other ones only ever so slightly you'll get the feel of it you'll you'll hear it when you get it right I'm also using this finger here just lightly draped over this top E string for an extra safety muting thing so I don't hear that bottom E string once we've gone through that, uh, that line, we go through that line E, E slash D sharp, which is what that chord is written at, because as, because we're playing an E power chord, should be E5, E5 slash D sharp, or that's maybe not even the right way to write, but you'll see what I mean. E5 is a power chord, the five denotes a power chord, but I've just written E, E slash D sharp, then D, D slash C sharp. Repeat that line four times. Then we move into the change, which is really beautiful. We go to a C sharp minor. He goes, day after day it reappears. And what we've got here, we move from a B sus4, whoops, a B sus4 to a B. So from that C sharp minor, day after day it reappears. And then B sus4. I put the diagrams on your on your chart so you can actually see what's going on here. It's an A shaped bar chord on the second fret. You're using your pinky to play that fifth fret on the B string, and then lifting it off. You can do it up here it's the same way. But things are happening down around this second and fourth fret, so I'd kind of like to keep the chords fairly close together to stay jumping around too much. So, day after day it reappears. B sus four down to B. Repeat that line back up to C sharp minor. Night after night, my heartbeat shows the fear. Then we move down to the next line, which is a G sharp sus4. Now, here's your G sharp on the 4th fret. You play an E shaped chord, that's your G sharp major. To make it a G sharp sus4, you're putting your pinky over onto that G string 6th fret. So therefore, when you leave that D string open, which is 
you know, open on the fourth fret. It turns into a G sharp seven sus four. So that's a G sharp seven. That's G sharp seven sus four. So we start with the sus four, then we put the pinky back to a normal G sharp. So hold up, day after day it reappears. Night after night my heart it shows the fear. Appear and fade. Now we go up to A away. Oh, you can go to an A on the fifth fret like that, or you can play an open A, but then we're going straight to a B. Then we hit the DS, which means del senio, which sends us back to the senio, which is at the beginning of the verse, beginning of your second line on your chart. So then we hit verse two. So sharp minor chords by the way in that whole section you can kind of break up your strumming you can day after day reappears night after night my heart shows the fear ghost G sharp 7 sus 4 ghost appear and fade back another day and that's your cue to go into the solo which is the, the verses with a slight different ending as it comes out of it so the verses go that line four times like we do in the verses then it comes into the C sharp minor B just the normal B then G sharp just the normal G sharp and then A Then we're into the last verse where he hits the stratosphere with his vocals. I can get to sleep. Right, up high, doing all that all the way through four times that line, and then day after day reappears. G sharp seven sus four. And fade away. Then we repeat that. Go appear and fade away. The third time we slow down. Go appear and fade away. And that's how he ends it, which is a lovely way to end it as well. Now, if you want to learn the solo, stay tuned. We'll go through that next. Uh, as far as the chords and the strumming and, and the basic arrangement of that song, that's it. Overkill, Colin Hay, Men at Work, fantastic song. Thanks for watching, now let's jump into the solo. Alright, let's take it through one note at a time for this fantastic guitar solo. We start off on the E chord, first note we hit is, we're hammering from the 7 on the G up to the 9 on the G string. That note there is an E, right, so we're starting with an E note. Then we slide up to 11, come back to 9, then down to 8. So, then you reach over to the D 9 fret, G 6th fret, G 7th fret, G string I'm talking about, and D string of course. So. Do that little hammer there. You can sneak these little hammers in anywhere you like, anywhere you think sounds good. It's not set in stone, but 
this is as far as I can tell what, what they're doing on not the original version. I've, I guess I've kind of taken a blend of what I've heard from acoustic versions of this song with Colin Hay doing it and to the original version with the guitar solo which is an electric guitar solo with bends in it. So a lot of the time when we're sliding during this solo you'll find on the other tab for the electric guitar version there'll be, there'll be bends. So there are more, always more bends on an electric guitar solo. They're a little bit more difficult on acoustic guitars. So generally speaking, we slide. Coming back to the start again. Hammer up to 9, 11, 9, 8. Reach over to the D string, 9th fret, 9, G string, 6, 7. Slide up to 9, back to 7, 6. Then three quick notes on the 9th fret D string, 7th fret D string, 6th fret D string. Then shift down so your first finger is over the fourth fret, and what we do is we play sixth fret with our third finger, sixth fret on the D string, and we hammer off or we pull off to the fourth fret D string very quickly and reach over with our pinky to the seventh fret A string. So it's. And then as soon as we do that, we jump down to the second fret A string with our first finger, hammer up to four and jump across to two on the D. So that's a fast little phrase there. It sounds like this. Practice that a few times because it comes and goes really quickly in this solo. Everything moves around quite, quite quickly. After you do that, jump up to four on the D string, hammer back to two again, and then four on the A string. So, so all up. Two on the D string, four on the A string to finish that little phrase. Then come up to the ninth fret, hammer from nine to eleven, then reach over with your first finger, play the ninth fret G string and B string together. What you're doing is you're hammering the G string note up to eleven. So it's like this. Four, five, G string, four, six, D string, four, six, then down to two on the A string. So. Then from there you go two on the A string, two, four, five, up to seven, slide if you like, back to five, down to four on the A string. Then across to the E string, seven, five, four. Then we're going into this long ascending run, which will take a little bit of, of uh, practice to get, but we're going from here, four, five, seven on the E string, four, six, seven, up to nine, so take it in little phrases, in little bites, it's much easier to digest if you can actually just put little runs together like this, four, five, seven, four, six, seven, nine, moving over to the D string, we go six, seven, nine, up to eleven, so Then G string, eight, nine, eleven. B string, nine, ten, twelve. Slide that twelve on the B string up to fourteen. On the E string, go eleven, twelve, fourteen, twelve, fourteen. Slide up to sixteen. Okay, so it's. Back to 12 and 14 again. Slide that 14 up to 16. Play it again. Come down to 14. Pull off down to 12 and reach over to 14 on the B. So. And then 12, 12 on the 
E, 14 on the B. So that last little bit. That's the end of the guitar solo. Then it's sax takes over, which I'm about to show you how to play those notes on a guitar. But let's go through that run from start to finish just to, just to give you something to practice with. So, so from the fourth fret, practicing that long ascending run. Without all the talking, it sounds like this. One more time. And the saxophone comes in and goes, which we can play here. 12 on the E string, 11, 12 on the B string, 13 on the G string. Play the 12s together on the B and the E. Go up to 14 on the E, and then down to the 11 on the E. So, come down to two, pair, two nines on the B and the E strings. Change the note on the E string to an 8, so you've got 9 on the B, 8 on the E. Then the last bit is on the E string, 8, 8, 9, 11, and then you finish on the 10 of the B and the 12 of the E. So, I can get to sleep. Solo, from start to finish, very slowly. One, two, Take your time with that. It's a really great guitar solo. Like I said, it's not set in stone. So if you find some little phrases that you think sound better, you know, you don't have to do these solos exactly perfectly note for note. It's an interesting exercise to learn them note for note and it's a great place to start. But if you veer off the path, don't be too hard on yourself. As long as it's, as long as it's conscious and deliberate, you can change these as much as you want. Like I said, bends a lot of the time for the electric slides for the acoustic. Try playing them both and figure out the differences and there will be other places within that solo where you can find some notes on different strings so instead of you know playing this here you might go and find that more comfortable for you. Take this as a starting point. Learn this solo as, as well as you can. It's a fantastic solo to a fantastic song. And we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.